Sunny Tuesday morning. I'm Katie. And I'm Caroline. So, lots of crazy stuff going on today, oh, yeah. but if you're, I'm one of those people who wakes up in the morning and I like, I set aside time to check my social media before yeah. I get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And you'll okay. notice Instagram is a little different today. Yeah. What do you think about that? I'm not a big fan of change all the time, <laughs> especially either. when they kind of just like spring it upon you. I need like warning. Yeah. I know there's been those memes going around. It's, it's like, like, click the follow. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I think that's just for that specific person. So don't yeah. do that. That's like a hoax or something. But I think what it is now is like the top posts are going to be like first. So mm -hmm. it's not in. Um, it's like the most viewed is going to be yeah. at the top of the. So like all yours, if you follow any like the Kardashians or yeah, you Selena know or Justin the Bieber, they're, that's what you're going to see first yeah. versus your All friends, your friends who friends. you really, really care yeah. about. <laughs> so I saw that and I follow a bunch of like fitness accounts and all I saw were like those at the top, which yeah. I have no problem with. I'm like, I'd like to see my friends' photos. Yeah. I'm not going to get any likes anymore. <laughs> I know so. it's a lot. Twitter kind of did the same thing where it's like the top um, tweets are mm -hmm. first now, and it's really confusing because I'm like, okay, this is from five hours ago, this is from seven, yeah. and now we're back to two minutes ago. It's really I confusing. I like to get I like to like, news yeah, and yeah, well, like in a timely order. Time, yeah. I don't so, know. I'm not a fan, but I'm not well, we'll see. I'm sure we'll all get used to it. That's yeah. what always happens. So. What about Easter? What did you think of that? That random snow. Well, I was home in Oklahoma, and we just got rain. Oh, thank goodness. Boy, you're lucky. Yeah, I was very lucky. I mean, it was still cold and rainy, but mm -hmm. I mean, it was just kind of a bleak Easter because of the game. Yeah. I was pretty upset, and then everywhere I went, my I went out to brunch with my family. It was like that's all anyone was talking about, yeah. and of course, like my the other side of my family, they're OU fans, so they just I mean, loved to rub it in my face. Yeah, I woke up and well, first of all, I wasn't happy because of the game that night. Yeah. And second, I woke up. I'm not a big fan of snow. It just ruined my day for some reason. Like, I just can't get anywhere. And so when I woke up, I saw it was like big snowflakes yeah. too, and it was sticking to the ground. I'm like, you've got to be. I couldn't believe I mean, it. Was like warm and sunny on Christmas and then yeah. decides to snow on Easter. And I was going to go home to go to church at like 9.30 in the morning and I so I woke up at like 7 and <laughs> I just saw, looked outside I'm like, are, are you serious? No. Is this a joke? <laughs> like it was just nice just yesterday and now yeah. it's snowing. It that is no typical Midwest weather for yeah. you right there. It's My, so annoying. I went home and no one was happy. They're like, don't talk to me. It's been a rough, rough night and morning. It's already snowing. The game, like we lost the game. Yeah. It, it was a rough day. Yeah, <laughs> very rough. But speaking of KU basketball, um, Chuck Diallo uh, announced that he was going to enter in the NBA draft yesterday, but he's not signing an agent. So mm -hmm. there's like a new rule though, where you can like go into the draft and you can like get evaluated. Um, but so he still has an opportunity to come back because if you don't get like a very good like rating or whatever, if yeah. like oh you need to work on some more stuff then you can come back. So that's good. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. But let's, let's, let's hope he happens. comes back. Yeah. Fingers crossed because we'll definitely need him next year. Oh, yeah. Um, so another crazy news also yesterday was that D.C. shooting. Yeah. Um, what was, like... That it, was for th there um, a man like set off the metal detectors before because before you enter the visitor center mm -hmm. in the Capitol because it's actually underground. So before you go in there, you have to like obviously go through security and he like yeah. pulled out a pistol looking weapon. And I think before he was able to get a shot off, um, they shot him. And so well, he's he was in surgery. I think he's kind of in critical or serious condition right now. It's don't that's scary. Quote me on that. Um, well, and every, like all the news were like, this is not a threat, this is not a threat, and yeah. I didn't know what was happening. I don't think it, it was was not terrorist related. He had interrupted Congress last year, I think in like October, saying that um, he was the true prophet of God. So, and actually I have a friend who works there, and he said they'd just gotten done doing a like a live shooter drill, so then they had to like turn around and do it like in real life. He said it was really crazy yesterday, and just like an overall... That's kind of scary day so things that happen in yeah. DC are crazy yeah and then this morning 
I woke up and there was an Egyptian plane hijacked. Oh my goodness. But it wasn't a terrorist. It was a man upset about his ex-wife who I'm guessing was on the flight. I don't know. That's so, like, what goes through people's minds to do that? Like, I don't know if that's like one really person, true love gonna, or he's just nuts. Yeah, you're gonna like hijack a plane full of strangers and innocent people because of one person. Yeah. Like, that's he let right. like most of them go and there was just like he's holding like the flight crew and like a couple others hostage at the end. Why? That's I don't know. That's bizarre. <laughs> I just don't understand what that's that is this. your bizarre news for the day. Yeah. All right. So we have actually two guests today. Mm -hmm. Um one she's here and the other we're Skyping in from France. So you definitely so, do not want to miss that. Definitely so stick stay around. Tuned. Yeah, we'll be right back. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. We are here with the center or coordinator of Center for Civic and Social Responsibility, Amanda Wright. So, what is this program about? So, so one of the main features of the Center for Civic and Social Responsibility is our Certificate in Service Learning, okay. uh, which we offer for students. It's basically an academic credential that goes on your transcript, but it's a way to take an interest in doing service and being involved in your community and actually get credit for that and learn about uh, ways to involve your community in your future and, and sort of develop a commitment to that beyond KU. That sounds great. So like, how did you get this program or the center started? So, so the program, the certificate, started about 10 years ago when uh, individuals in the administration recognized that students were really interested in having out of the class experiences that would be valuable, but maybe they didn't have time to develop a full minor, or they didn't really have the finances or the ability to study abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and so this program was sort of born out of that idea that we want students to be able to pursue things that they're passionate about and interested in, even if that's not exactly within their major. Um, so basically we decided that doing uh, service within a classroom setting, so taking the things that you are learning in your classroom, mm -hmm. the stuff that you're studying, and actually applying that in a way that benefits your community yeah. uh, should be something that students can, can focus on a little bit and get sort of some credit for that they can then take out into the job market and say, you know, this is something I'm committed to. Right, that sounds awesome. So you mentioned the certificate. Mm -hmm. How do you go about earning that? So the Certificate in Service Learning is one of a number of experiential learning certificates at KU, and they all have different requirements. But mm -hmm. for service learning specifically, you take two uh, three-credit service learning classes, and really those are offered in a wide variety of areas. So we have everything from social work classes to visual design yeah. to uh, you know a variety, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so you take two of those classes, and then you have a total of 60 hours of doing volunteer work, of doing wow. service. And that includes what you did in the class. So if you did 20 hours in both of your classes, you just need 20 more hours. And once you do all of that, you do a final reflection where we ask mm -hmm. you to think about you know, what your experience has taught you about being a citizen mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how it might have changed your views on things in the world and yeah. for your future. So how can students get involved with this? So one of the great things to do if you're just interested and you haven't tried it before is to do service. Uh, so that can be through the Center for Community Outreach. That could be going on an alternative break or getting involved in the community. The other thing is you can go to our website, which is ccsr.ku.edu, and we have a list of courses that are offered every semester that qualify as service learning. So if one strikes your interest and sounds cool, mm -hmm. go ahead and enroll in it and see what it's like. We've got courses for fall and summer up now. All right, great. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I just think uh, this is a really great way. The nice thing is it's kind of like getting a minor because it's an accolade you receive, yeah. but it's way less effort. So okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's, it's definitely an incentive for students, I think. <laughs> college students. Exactly. Like, if it takes less effort, I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> and it's great for the community. So It is. It really is. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Stay tuned for an interview from Europe. <laughs>
Welcome back. We have Caitlin Colhane here with us all the way from Angers, France. Caitlin, thank you Hi. so much for joining us. I guess it's probably, what, 5 o'clock there your time right now? Yes, it's uh, about 5 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, so you've had your full day of classes already. Lucky. Yeah, I had a full day of class. <laughs> done now so I, get, I got back home and you know I'm gonna rest and you know dinner's later in Europe but they have some really yummy dinners so. yeah so what has your favorite thing been so far about studying abroad my favorite thing is just learning all about the French culture and probably eating the French food um, <laughs> chocolate croissants are a great way to start the day and uh, you know there's some delicious crepes and everything like that too have you had to try any like weird foods yet because I, when I went to France, I was forced to try, like, snails and clams. It was not good. I actually tried oysters for the first time. We were uh, on the coast of kind of near Brittany in France, and I tried oysters for the first time. So, you know, you're by the, you're, you're by the water, and they're going to be very fresh. Were they good? that was my adventure, and it, it was great. <laughs> was it, like, slimy and gross? It wasn't too bad. <laughs> so what was your application process like for study abroad? Like how did that all of that go and what was that like? Yeah, well, it was pretty easy. So my program was through KU. So they everything was already set up and it was pretty streamlined. Um, you know, everything's online. So you just apply online. There's a few things you have to write. And then once you submit everything, um, it's a short wait before you get an email saying you're accepted. Yeah, so you're with other KU students then? I am. There is eight of us here total, oh, and wow. then there are students from other universities in the U.S. There's several from Notre Dame and Ole Miss and um, a few from Oregon. Oh, wow. So a good variety. So yeah, last week with the bombings in Belgium, were you guys affected by any of that? Um, less than I thought I was going to be. You know, Belgium is right next to France, and it helped that there was um, – everyone in France wasn't – you know, you couldn't tell um, an obvious difference. Like, people weren't very nervous in, um, like, outside. My teachers and my host family, they weren't especially nervous. And nothing, I couldn't tell, like, a big change. So that made me feel a little bit better. But it is definitely a little more scary when you think this is right next to me and not an ocean away from me. Yeah. yeah so just be careful and be safe. So have you learned a lot? of new lessons since you've been abroad that you can share with our audience? Yeah, uh, the coolest thing that I've learned is, so I'm taking all uh, French classes. Wow. Uh, one of my majors is French, so I'm very immersed in the French language and French culture. And in my language classes, there is people from all other countries. So there's Chinese students, Japanese students, um, Vietnam students, um, wow. Mexican. So people from all across the world and it's really cool to see how our cultures are similar and how they're different and what those differences are and um, that's been a really cool thing for me to compare and also helps me think about like our culture in America in a, a little bit different way. It gives me a new perspective. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, so that's awesome. So do you have a favorite place you've been so far or one that you're really excited to go to? Um, I really love my town that I'm in. It's a little, it's an hour and a half from Paris, but it's, it's a really cute little French town. And, you know, everywhere you go in France has amazing architecture. And my favorite thing, it's like a little, you know, a little strange, but all of the French doors are beautiful. They're all painted bright colors. They use so many blues and I have one door that's my favorite because it's the best blue I've ever seen. <laughs> and so just all of the French architecture is my favorite. Yeah, I know you're big on design and everything, so I'm sure you're just <laughs> in heaven over there. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, and it's so good to see you again. We can't wait thank until you. you get back. Yeah. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back, I'm Megan Boffert. And I'm Noelle Steins. This is your Tuesday Good Morning KU News Update. 
The FBI has dropped its lawsuit against Apple after they were able to break into the San Bernardino's terror attacker's phone. The U.S. had filed the suit against Apple to force them to help unlock the iPhone, but now that the iPhone is unlocked, they no longer need Apple's assistance. Apple originally refused to unlock the phone because of privacy and security issues. Police shot a man at the U.S. Capitol on Monday after the man pulled what appeared to be a weapon out at the visitor center. The man had tried to go through the metal detectors but was stopped when, by security when the detectors went off. That was when he pulled out the possible weapon. The man is now in critical condition. The police believe that this was just a criminal act and was not a possible act of terrorism. Lawrence City Manager Tom Marcus is not going to approve a $1 million request from the police department without the consent of the entire city commission. The police department is seeking to add 17 new officers to replace retiring officers and have a bigger presence on the streets. Marcus says he plans to support the request in part, but not without first hearing from the other members of the city commission. KU basketball player Perry Ellis um, uh, Perry Ellis was honored with two awards on Monday. Ellis was named the John R. Wooden Award All-American Team for this season um, for the Wooden Na Award National Advisory Board and named All-American Second Team by the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Ellis was named earlier in the season an All-American Second Team by USA Today and Sports Illustrated. According to the University Daily Kansan, Ellis will be, er, Ellis will end his KU basketball career 8th all-time in scoring and 12th all-time in rebounding at KU. Freshman Czech Diallo has declared his intentions to make himself eligible for the next NBA draft. While this once would have ended his career at KU, a new rule change now allows players to test the waters and then make a decision before hiring an agent. The deadline for a final decision is May 25th. Former KU assistant coach Kevin Stallings has been named head coach at the University of Pittsburgh. Stalling spent the past 17 years as the head coach at Vanderbilt and led the Commodores to seven NCAA appearances. He coached five years at Kansas and was an assistant under Roy Williams. KU theater students and alumni are putting on a new variety show called Fools in Love on Friday, April 1st. This show is a fundraising event put on by the Friends of the Theater and will help fund the KU Theater Student Enrichment Fund. Tickets for Fools in Love are on sale now, online, or at the door. Prices are $20 for general admission and $10 for students. And that will wrap it up for today's news update. Don't forget to join us next week on Good Morning KU.